everyone, Ms. Patsy here at Castile Innovation Lab. Today we will be studying the fourth grade science book, Soils, Rocks, and Landforms, Investigation 1, Soils and Weathering, Part 2, Physical Weathering. Question, what causes big rocks to break down into smaller rocks? Let's find out. Last time we learned about soil. Soil is a mixture of rock particles and organic matter known as humus. If rocks start out as big as mountains, how do they get broken down into pieces to be part of soil? So our focus for today is to find out how big rocks get broken down into smaller rocks. Here I have two bags of rocks. This one is labeled rock conglomerate. And they look like this. This bag is not labeled, but the investigation calls for granite rock. So I'm hoping these are granite. I think they look like granite, so I'm using them as our granite rocks. The word conglomerate means that it's made of different rocks and minerals. Whereas granite is an igneous rock, which means it was made from lava or magma. How does nature break these rocks into smaller pieces? For today's investigation, we are going to use plastic jars to tumble rocks. I put eight pieces of conglomerate rocks in this jar and I put eight pieces of granite in this jar and we are going to shake them vigorously for two minutes each. I'm going to speed up the video so we don't have to watch me shake rocks for four minutes. So let's start with the granite. That's two minutes for that one. And let's shake this one for two minutes. Now that we've shaken that for two minutes, let's let them rest and let the dust settle down and we will look at our rocks and see what happened to them. Now that the dust is settled, let's pour out our tumbled rocks. to our plates so we can observe them and see how they have changed. What do you notice about the tumbled rocks? Let's compare them to rocks that haven't been tumbled. Is there a difference? between the two plates of rocks. The tumbled rocks has a lot of sand and pebbles, whereas the untumbled rocks do not. Here are the conglomerate rocks. What do you notice about the tumbled conglomerate rocks? 
let's compare them to the con conglomerate rocks that haven't been tumbled. Each plate has eight conglomerate rocks. Also, did you notice a difference between granite rocks and conglomerate rocks? On a blank sheet in your science journal, write down what causes big rocks to break into smaller rocks and answer the question. Draw a picture in your science journal to describe what you see. All rocks, including mountains exposed at Earth's surface, break apart over time. Weathering is the geological word used to describe the breakdown of rock. On this plate, I have two pieces of scaria. It is a reddish porous rock formed from the froth on top of flowing lava. I'm going to use them to demonstrate abrasion. Abrasion occurs when rocks rub together, like in our jars. It also occurs when rocks fall or tumble in landslides or when rocks hit one another. When they are pushed around by water, waves, and wind. An abrasion is an example of physical weathering. Physical weathering is when rocks break into smaller pieces without changing their chemical composition. Let's look at another cause of physical weathering, ice. Water sometimes flows into cracks in rocks. When the weather gets cold enough, the water can freeze. Let's pretend that this bottle is a rock. I'm going to fill it with water. And close it up tightly. and I'm going to put it in a freezer. I'm putting it in this bucket so it doesn't make a mess. And we're gonna leave it there overnight and check on it tomorrow. It's been 24 hours since we put our jar of water in the freezer. Now let's look at our jar. You can see that the ice has pushed off the cap and I put that on very tightly. You can also see how much the ice has expanded out of the jar and how much it's cracked the jar all the way around. This is what the jar looks like after the ice has melted. This is a perfect example of physical weathering. Our response sheet for this investigation says a soil scientist collected two samples of soil from a river that is 10 kilometers long. Here is what she wrote in her notebook about the samples. Sample number one, found at the beginning of the river, top of the mountain. Observations, mostly pieces of granite earth material sizes, pebbles, and gravel. Earth materials have sharp edges. Soil sample number two, found at the end of the river where it emptied into a lake. Observations, mostly pieces of granite, earth material sizes, mostly sand, some gravel. Earth materials have rounded edges.
Below it says, explain why she found the same kind of rocks in both places, but saw differences in the size and shape of the rocks. I made this illustration to help us understand what the scientist had observed. So she said that at the beginning of the river, on top of the mountain, she found pieces of granite. Material size was pebbles and gravel, and the earth materials have sharp edges. So here I have some pebbles, granite pebbles, with sharp edges. Then she went to the end of the river where it emptied into a lake, and she found pieces of granite, but now they were much smaller, mostly sand and some gravel. Now, what do you think happened between the top of the mountain to the bottom by the lake? I want you to envision that as the rocks flow down the river, they actually go through a tumbling process, kind of like what we did in our jars. The rocks hit one another, they, they are smoothed out by the river, other rocks, so that the sharp edges get knocked off as they tumble down. And as little pieces come off, they end up down here as gravel and sand. So your job is to explain why she found the same kind of rocks in both places but saw differences in size and shape of the rocks. I hope this helps you explain why she found the same kind of rocks in both places but saw differences in the size and shape of the rocks. Now let's review our vocabulary words for today. Soil, a mixture of rock particles and organic matter known as humus. Granite, an igneous volcanic rock. And conglomerate rock, rocks made of differing rocks and minerals. Weathering, a geological word for the breakdown of rocks. Abrasion, when rocks rub together. Physical weathering, when rocks break down into smaller pieces without changing their chemical composition. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed our investigation on physical weathering. And until next time, have a great day.